everyone. Welcome to a really neat episode of Biologic Science News. Today, I want to talk about the efforts of researchers at Duke University to create working artificial cardiac tissue that can be transplanted into human hearts damaged by a heart attack. A heart attack, or a myocardial infarction, is an event where blood flow to the heart tissue is blocked or cut off, such that oxygen and nutrients can't make it to the heart tissue. The cells in the starving heart tissue eventually die, and they become unable to conduct neural signals, or contract to pump blood. Thus, a heart attack will create patches of dead cells, which overall weakens the heart and reduces its effectiveness at pumping blood. The dead cardiac tissue doesn't grow back. It gets replaced with scar tissue that can't contract or conduct neural signals. This is bad, because those are the two major functions of heart tissue. If it can't conduct neurochemical signals, then the tissue can't coordinate its contraction with other heart cells. If it can't contract forcefully, then it can't adequately pump blood. If the heart tissue can't coordinate the pumps or produce pumps forceful enough to move blood, the heart tissue is ineffective. Current attempts at helping hearts recover from heart attacks usually involve stem cells being injected into the heart in the hopes that these will turn into functional cardiac cells. These stem cells are typically sourced from bone marrow or blood, sometimes from the heart itself, but the success rate is relatively low. Less than 1% of these transplanted stem cells turn into functional cardiac cells. The researchers found that they could grow heart tissue in petri dishes by first creating artificially induced pluripotent stem cells, then by turning them into fibroblasts, cardiomyocytes, endothelial muscle cells, and smooth muscle cells. These different types of cells are grown in certain ratios in the petri dishes. The researchers also found that they could grow thicker, larger patches of heart tissue, you know, thicker layers of cells, by gently rocking the petri dishes and shaking around the nutrient-rich solution that the cells were growing in. These artificially grown heart cells had all the functional and neurochemical properties of regular heart cells, and when transplanted into mice and rat hearts, they were effective at repairing the damaged tissue. But here is where the researchers come into a problem. Human hearts are larger and heavier, and they pump more blood than a mouse heart. Any heart patch intended for a human patient would have to be much larger and much thicker to be effective. The problem is that you can't grow tissue this big by feeding it nutrients solely through diffusion. For big growths of tissue, you need vascularization to ensure that all the cells get the oxygen and the nutrients they need. Furthermore, they're also trying to grow the heart tissue quickly, on a time scale of weeks, as opposed to natural cardiac cell growth, which takes place over years. Duke University released a short video documenting the heart patches as they were being grown in these petri dishes. It's absolutely fascinating. The heart tissue is growing as a small, thin sheet, within a square border of substrate. In regular pulses, timed exactly like a heartbeat, the cells make a drastic contraction, and the square border is visibly, almost violently squeezed inwards. It pulses with a visible force, and even though it's still relatively thin, less than 10 cells thick, actually, it's still super exciting. If you're listening to this, you have access to YouTube, so you should really look this up. Look up Duke University Cardiac Tissue Petri Dish, and you can watch the heart tissue as it contracts. It's just, it's mind-blowing. The researchers' next goal is to develop some kind of vascularization that can enable the growth of thicker sheets of cells, so that they can develop artificial heart patches that are strong enough and large enough to be used in human patients. 